Yo, you guys, my birthday is over. Oh my gosh, it was wonderful. Thanks to everyone who wished me a happy birthday. I truly love you all. A new year has begun and I'm so excited for it. Like, I had such a great birthday this year, <laughs> but it wasn't always like that. Last year and the year before that, I had a major breakdown. I was anxious, I was borderline depressed. And I say borderline because after some time it passed, but I was not good. So today I will be taking a jab at depression and anxiety, but I will focus on anxiety for now because it's such a broad topic. And I think I don't want to rush through it and not give you the salient points that cover both. So we'll talk about anxiety today. We'll talk about the causes and how to cope with anxiety because anxiety will happen and that's okay, life happens. So that being said, if you haven't subscribed yet, I hope you do, no judgment. Welcome to Let Lucia. So first of all, understand that anxiety could be a symptom of depression. And But the major difference between anxiety and depression is that with depression, the individual feels mellow, sad, you know, down. But with anxiety, the person's agitated and sometimes hyper, you know, and always on edge. And depression is different from sadness in that sadness becomes depression when the sadness lasts for up to two weeks. So you can feel sad and someone will say, let's go for a walk, it's something you love to do, right? And you'd be like, yeah, of course, and it'll make you feel better. But with depression, if someone said, let's go for a walk, and you usually love to go for a walk and you're saying no, it's no longer exciting you, then there's the possibility that you're experiencing depression. So to understand the physiology a little bit, there are three parts of the brain that are particularly affected by depression and or anxiety. There is the amygdala, which is responsible for the range of emotions that we feel, anger, fear, sadness. You think it, it does it. So you see a spider and you're afraid, that's the amygdala working. Then there is a thalamus responsible for how we react to things, how we think, we learn, move, and talk. And then the third part is the hippocampus. So you remember the fear of the spider that you had with the amygdala? Hmm. The hippocampus takes it and makes the long-term memories. So at the moment you see a spider, you remember how scared you were the last time and you run. So it, it creates that memory for you. All of these work with the prefrontal cortex because that's the part that helps you rationalize things and starts the chain of reaction to the rest of the body. What chemicals are released during depression and anxiety? There are three main neurotransmitters associated with depression or anxiety. There's dopamine, which creates that positive feeling associated with a reward, which generates the motivation to keep going at a task or activity. The second neurotransmitter is serotonin, which regulates our mood, sleep pattern, appetite, and it also helps soothe pain. It's the feel-good neurotransmitter. And the third is the norepinephrine, which plays a role in the fight or flight response. And then there's a fourth one associated more with anxiety and it's called GABA. Gamma aminobutyric acid, which plays a role in balancing how excited or agitated you are and brings that feeling of calm and relaxation. Now these neurotransmitters or chemical messengers are transferred from one neuron to the other in a very smooth mechanism that lasts seconds. The slightest interruption to that mechanism is what leads to chronic or medical depression or anxiety. Not everyone experiences fear and anxiety at some point in their lives or their day even. Anxiety is different from fear in that fear is a response to a very specific stimulus while anxiety is a sustained response to something you even anticipate. And it could be a bunch of things in one. So let's take for instance, you are going to a haunted house, a real haunted house. You're anxious because you, you think you're gonna see a ghost. You're already anticipating, oh my gosh, I'm gonna see a ghost, so you're anxious. Now when you eventually see that ghost and you run, that is fear working, not anxiety now. I don't even know why I use this example. I'm not gonna be able to sleep tonight, but it's okay. <laughs> so types of anxiety disorders include generalized anxiety disorder, panic disorder or panic attacks, obsessive compulsive disorder, AKA OCD, and um, all kinds of phobias. So when you experience these symptoms of anxiety, which I'm gonna list here in a second, when you experience them for most days for more than six months, and they cause you distress in your daily life, 
then you might be having generalized anxiety disorder. And some of these symptoms include feeling tired easily, difficulty concentrating or remembering stuff, muscle tension, racing heart, difficulty sleeping, restlessness or feeling on edge all the time, excess worry or fear, panic or pure dread. So you know yourself more than anyone. Is there any feelings or behaviors that you're experiencing that are abnormal? Please talk to someone. There might be something going on, okay? Make sure you're talking to someone. Causes of anxiety or risk factors include traits of shyness as a child or behavioral inhibition as a child that will cause you to be anxious. You've just grown with it and now you're just anxious for certain things, maybe social gatherings or you have some social anxiety or separation anxiety. Another risk factor is stressful and negative life or environmental events, which is most, most common. And then there's a history of anxiety in biological relatives. It might just be in your family, it's possible. And then there's also excessive use of caffeine, quite frankly, that raise your cortisol levels, right? Or other physical health problems like thyroid problems or heart arrhythmias, which is irregular heartbeat. All of these could cause the possibility of anxiety disorder. So how do you manage your symptoms? Listen very carefully. <laughs> Number one, allow yourself to feel what you're feeling. Anxiety disorders and medical conditions and what you are feeling is a result of underlying causes and triggers. So it's not your fault and you're not a failure and it's not a weakness. It's just what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. What it is. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, try to do things that you have control over, like taking a walk, making your bed, washing your car, whatever the case is, just the simple things. Do something that gives you a sense of accomplishment and power. Number three, create a daily routine or a morning routine or an evening routine in order to provide a sense of control and structure to your life. Number four, try to get seven to eight hours of sleep because inadequate or poor sleep can cause problems with your immune system, your cardiovascular system, in fact, all the systems. It just affects your whole body. Number five, eat nutritious food at least once a day. An apple, nuts, a banana. Yeah, by the way, are you following me on Instagram? <laughs> at Lucy Lou. I share like weekly health phone facts that help you remember a few of these things. And I shared recently that bananas contain dopamine, which is one of the neurotransmitters that balance the mood. Uh, yeah, grab a banana today if you're feeling anxious. Number six, go for a walk. Exercise is a good mood booster. And if exercising or going to the gym is an anxiety trigger for you, try dancing or doing something you love. Take a walk with someone that you can talk to along the way. I have done it. I was on the phone with a friend and we walked and we walked for like 50 minutes and didn't even time just passed <laughs> so yeah it's a nice idea number seven do things that bring you comfort go shopping go to the spa watch a movie take a break just breathe number eight speak up reach out to people who love you tell them exactly how you're feeling offload get the encouragement you need okay because it helps. So yeah, these are just some ways to cope with anxiety. And if you start to feel severe symptoms like problems with sleeping or unexplained emotional changes or sudden loss of interest or feeling of helplessness, please see a doctor. They would either recommend some form of therapy for you, maybe cognitive behavioral therapy, which helps you adjust your thoughts, behaviors and reactions to be more rational and helps you dig into positive thoughts, which positive thoughts are so helpful or they will try interpersonal therapy which helps you with communication strategies that um, help you express yourself better or problem solving therapy that focuses on using coping skills to manage your symptoms they might also prescribe medications such as antidepressants or anti-anxiety medicines and the way these work is that they target growth of neurons because with growth of neurons the mood improves because a new neuron is a fresh item so it comes with fresh mood and, and all of that while some target the production or inhibition of specific neurotransmitters those chemicals we talked about earlier yeah they would cause your body to release uh, produce more or inhibit some that are not so good or balance it out somehow so yeah these are the treatment the, the what to expect if you're gonna get treatment for dealing with anxiety 
So someone shared something with me recently. For people in Nigeria, please visit this website, opencounseling.com for hotlines to free telephone therapy sessions. Yes, free. Do it now. They have numbers for domestic and sexual violence, hotlines for suicide, or counseling for AIDS and sexual health. So yeah, call them for your friend or for yourself. So that's for people in Nigeria. And of course, for the US, there's always the National Suicide Helpline. Please make sure you're reaching out, all right? I hope you learned something new in this video. Share your story. What have you learned? Ask me any follow-up questions. I'm very happy to do the research. Let's engage. Let's talk about this. So that you're not alone. If you're dealing with anxiety or depression, it's a medical condition. It can be malaria. It can be typhoid. It can be diarrhea. It can be anything. It's just mental health. It's not, let's try to not stigmatize people who experience these things and encourage them to come out and tell us how they're feeling. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed the next video that is popping up on your screen and I hope that you subscribe, like, and share and I will see you next time. But until then, keep breathing. It's very important, okay? Usah.